The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Welcome to Service of the Word for the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Particular thanks to Richard Brain and the Christ Church Virtual Choir for their recordings this week and to Clive and Anna for their readings as well as Jackie for the intercessions. We're particularly pleased that the homily this week is from Bishop Rob of Edmonton who recorded it for use by churches in the Edmonton area. So we are delighted to include him in this week's service. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. That through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labour for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. 
Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Here ends the first reading. The Lord uphold that all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them the meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. Yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh give thanks unto his holy name forever and ever. to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Here ends the second reading. I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, one of the great joys of being in the Diocese of London is our link with Angola and Mozambique. And I've been really struck on the few occasions I've been to Mozambique and Angola just to look at what makes the churches work in their local community because we see in the churches there, as we do over here, a real striving to change the very fabric of society, the way in which a community forms, the way in which a community develops, the way in which a community lives. 
out in Angola and Mozambique, what's really striking is the prevalence of church-based health care, clinics and hospitals, but also education, the way in which when you build a new church, quite often you will build a new school as well. It's extraordinary to see the ways and the lengths that people will go to to transform the very fabric of the societies which they're in. We've seen it too over here in relation to our time of lockdown during COVID. We've seen many of our churches striving in all sorts of different ways to reach out to the local communities to change the very fabric of society. And we can see this now, can't we, in terms of the churches striving to respond to the deep sense of inequality which has once again reared its ugly head, particularly in London, about the impact of Covid in affecting the poorest the most. And so my friends, what sort of inspiration do we take from the scriptures for this sort of social based work, a social gospel? Well my friends, today's gospel reading that we've heard from Matthew chapter 14 is a very clear example of how the actions of a few people can affect a much greater number of people. The impact of using whatever's in the room at that time in a different way. In this instance, it's a young boy's packed lunch in order to change the very fabric of society. Jesus, of course, hears this. Now, what's the this that Jesus hears of? Well, of course, it's the death of John the Baptist. And Jesus wants a bit of quiet time. He wants to get away. He goes into a boat and he goes to a deserted place. But people follow him because they want something of the style that he's been talking about. They love what they hear and they all want more. And so the crowds follow him from all the towns, we are told. And when he went ashore, Jesus then cures the sick, once again building up that deep sense of anticipation for who Jesus is, affecting the very fabric of the society in which they're in. He cures the sick. But then we notice that when evening comes, there's a great big crowd there and the disciples want to get rid of the crowd. They want to put their heads down. They're getting tired. But Jesus says, no, use a bit of leadership actually see what's around you in terms of providing for their needs. The disciples say to Jesus, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. And there's a real sense of edginess to this. There's a real sense of danger to this, that actually people need to get to a place of safety. But it's in the edginess it's in the danger. It's also in the fact that Jesus cures the sick of a large crowd, that Jesus has compassion. That deep seated, gut wrenching compassion which spurs him to action. And there's something about Jesus' compassion here. There's something about the neediness of the crowd. There's also something here in relation to the edginess of the environment that we're in, which all the more lends itself to this extraordinary extraordinary miracle where Jesus carries out this Eucharistic act upon this fish and upon this bread and then shares, orders the crowds to sit down, perhaps yes 5,000 men but also women and children. This could be 20 to 30,000 people. This is about changing the very fabric of the society in which we're in and it comes from Jesus' compassion it comes from the crowd wanting something from Jesus because he's built up this extraordinary sense of people, people knowing that there's someone quite extraordinary in the place with them. And Jesus takes whatever is in the room, in the edginess of the place. He takes whatever is there, in this case, this Eucharistic act with this bread and this fish, and then shares, led by the twelve disciples with 12 baskets full, saying something of the abundance that comes with Jesus Christ in terms of the restructuring of the 12 tribes of Israel rooted in the 12 apostles. 
My friends, this is of course a precursor of the cross, where God's great generosity will be demonstrated for all to see, where it's not just those who are gathered on the shoreline at that particular moment who will find that sense of liberation, that sense of being met by Jesus in their places of deepest need, in the edginess, but actually our society is transformed, the world is transformed, death is transformed through the power of the cross to enable us to live in forgiveness and in hope and in peace. The very fabric of the building blocks of a good society where people love and people forgive and people live in peace. So I wonder, my friends, spurred by this particular gospel story, what does that mean for you and for I to live in that sense of action? Not just for our own sakes, because this is a broad action. This is about changing the very structures of society in which we live. Spurred on at this moment by the death of John the Baptist. I wonder what this looks like for you and for me in the course of this August, in this time of the coronavirus. My friends, Jesus compels us to action, not just in the church for our own sakes, but right across society, to challenge unjust structures, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, and to build the kingdom of love and joy and peace. May you be inspired in terms of this gospel reading to think with Jesus' enormous sense of imagination and may you be inspired in the ministry that you're offering in your place today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray to God, the source of all prophecy and righteousness, and by whose grace we know that he is present here with us. Father, give all in your church strength and grace to overcome weakness and courage to proclaim your truth. Shield your church from carelessly accepting your grace without remembering the cost of our salvation. Amen. Father, hear the cries of the world. Be with those who are fearful for their future, fearful of loss of employment, for those who suffer financial hardship and have limited security and stability in their lives. Have mercy on all those who are weak and vulnerable. We pray for those who are often stigmatised because of their addictions. Give to them the strength that they cannot find in themselves. We pray that we will provide greater and better care for each other and for your world. For peace and an end to global terrorism for all those at the peak and aftermath of the coronavirus outbreak, for the suffering people caught up in wars. Particularly we pray for the starving children of Yemen. Amen. Father, we pray for Queen Elizabeth II and the government, for residents and staff of retirement and nursing homes, for all those who live in Waterfall Close, we praise you and give you thanks for our families, friendships and our church community. Guide us in discerning the needs of our congregation and the wider community and in showing us ways to meet those needs. Give us insight to see the burdens that many in our community bear and grant us generous hearts and minds to bring kindness, care and relief. Amen. Father, we pray for all who are suffering through ill health and are in pain, particularly for those who are isolated and alone. Let them know the comfort and presence of your love within themselves. Let them draw near to you and soothe their distress. We pray for all who have recently and previously passed from this world to the light of your eternal kingdom. Amen. We stand in the presence of God, praying that our faith may be shown in works of love. May our prayers be accepted in the name of Christ, who has called us to follow him and be messengers of his truth. Amen.
Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of life. Glory to you for ever. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.